In this video, we're going to look at creating some variables and creating vectors and giving them variable names. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go find our gas prices data. So you can go over here, the thing that's what I showed you last time, but let's go here this time. It doesn't matter. I've got mine on the desktop and I call it gas prices. Anybody see that? Here we go. Click OK. And we should have all of our um, variables from last time stored in gasprices.mat. Click on that and you'll see all of all the data that we made from the last videos will pop up. Okay? So the first thing I want to do is use our data to create some variables. Um, let's look at the data here. And I want to look at my column headers. So I click on that. So we see the column headers. It's here year and all the countries we have. Go back here, and let's say, for example, I want to extract the the USA prices in the 90s. So I would name this. I mean, you could name it whatever you want to, but I would say US gas prices 90s equals. Okay, and I want to pull it out of this this file this variable here data. So I would say data. And then you tell it the, the first argument in the data parentheses is you tell it the rows you want. And we want, so for our rows, we want for the 90s, we want row 1, if we look here, row 1, down through row 10. And you could do that, you could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, ten. We do it like that and comma and then we want for our columns we want column just column eleven. There. And if we hit enter, you see that gives me all the rows that have all the gas prices for the nineties and gives me the column for my US prices. Okay? So if we look at it, so we're in column 11, let's look and make sure it matches up. So $1.16, $1.14, $1.16, $1.14, you see that matches up. And that created a column vector there. If you wanted to make that a row vector instead of a column vector, you see that's a column. If we wanted a row to go horizontally, we could just do US gas prices 90s and then hit the prime, the apostrophe there, and you see that gives us the column vector here, or it gives us a row vector. Okay, if we want to get, if we want a row vector, you do our prime or our apostrophe. Okay, and just note that when you're naming, so I named this U.S. gas prices for variables. They have they're case sensitive, so if I named another variable, let's say I said U US gas prices 90s equals US gas prices 90s prime. That gives me a, if you look over here, so we've got US gas prices 90s here and we've got the big US gas prices 90s there. So the fact that I use different I use a capital U here and a capital U there. It's a different variable, so it is case sensitive. Oh. You can use for you can use numbers in your variable names, and you can use letters, of course, uppercase and lowercase, and you can use underscores. So those three things, and the the only rule is, other than that, that you must start it with a letter. You can't name a variable starting with a number or starting with an underscore. Okay. So, and let's, what if I wanted to find the average, uh, I think we, we're going to call that mean, let's say mean U.S. gas prices 90s. We'll see, see their average gas price in the 90s was $1.14, that's pretty amazing, $1.15 there, we rounded up. Uh, it's hard to believe what we pay for gas now in the 90s that it was that cheap. But I guess the 90s was a while ago. 
Oh, so that m mean is our function that will give us the average of our gas prices. So another thing I want to talk about in this video, let me close this out. I'm going to clear my screen. So remember CLC, we'll clear the screen, get me back to the top here. And let's say now I want to create a vector and I'm going to just randomly create one here. I'm going to call it numbers. So numbers equals, and let's just say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, you see here that created the row vector numbers, and you see it over here, and the variables that we have named. We could have done, uh, and again, just quickly, numbers prime. So give me the column vector. If I want to create a column vector without using that, uh, I could have done, uh, let me say numbers with a capital there, equals one semicolon two, semicolon three, semicolon four, semicolon five, six, seven, oops. I think that's all I did in that one, yeah. So I see that gives me a column vector too. So that when you use commas, it's going to give you a row vector. When you use semicolon, semicolons, it's going to give you a column vector. Another thing that we could have done, and we can just rename numbers, and we could have just said z equals zero colon nine. And you see that colon, that's an operation in MATLAB. It tells this thing to go from 0 to 9 in increments of 1. It gives us a row vector from 0 to 9 in increments of 1. And that will be that one. Let's say I wanted to use that to make a... Uh, let me clear this thing out again. And I wanted to... Let's say I want a column vector from 0 to 100, and I'm going to use what i just done. So let's say we have numbers equals 0 to 100. Now I don't want to see that output. Uh, first let's look at it. So we see there's the output. So let me see I'll see. Now another important thing here, hit the up and down arrows. If you hit the up and down arrows on your keypad, it will take you through your command history. And so if I hit the up arrow one time, it takes me to where I cleared screen. Again, it gives me my number 0 to 100 there. If I put a colon after that, it will create the number 0 to 100. Now if we go look at numbers here, we, say, we see that we created our numbers 0 to 100. See that row vector? Okay. But we don't see any of the output, and that is because of this colon or semicolon that we put there. And let's say I actually needed that to be a uh, column vector, so I would just say numbers equals numbers with a little m uh, prime. Okay? Couple more things here before we close this video out that I want to do with this to create, let's say we wanted the, just the even numbers. Okay? So even numbers would equal, we would want to go from 2 to 100. 2 colon 2 colon 100. So when I just do 2 colon 100, that's going to give me all the numbers from 2 to 100. Okay? But if in between there I do 2, that tells it to go to, go, to start at 2 to go in increments of 2 and to go to 100. That's going to give me all the even numbers uh, 2 through 100. Okay? So let's do odd numbers. So that would be, we'd want to start at 1 colon, still going in increments of 2 to 100. And that would give me all the odd numbers between 1 and 100. And one last 
math or MATLAB command that I want to give you on this video is called linspace. Linspace. Let's say linspace one to ten. Uh, we want ten of them. That would just give me the numbers one through ten. Uh, let's say one to ten, and then so for this lens space, this tells the one to ten tells you your interval. The, the first two tell you your interval, and the third one tells you tells MATLAB how many numbers you want evenly spaced between one and ten. Let's say if we said three, so it's going to do its best to find three. So it starts at one, then goes to five point five, and then goes to ten. Uh, we want four numbers equally spaced between one and ten. Well. It'd be one, four, seven, ten. So we wanted twenty numbers equally spaced. So that lens space gives me. So I tell it for, I want my numbers to go from one to ten, and I want twenty numbers equally spaced between one and ten, and that gives me this column vector here, or the row vector. I'm sorry. So if we wanted to see that thing in a column. There we go. There's 20 numbers. So I just put the prime up there. Okay? I'll see you in the next video.